All right, some troubling numbers coming out. It's a new study on education. The high school dropout rate among Latino students is more than 30%. Wide, some 31% of Latino high school students drop out. That's 9% higher than the national average. A new study shows Arizona lagging behind in graduation rates. Over the past decade, Arizona's graduation rates dropped 4%. Well, those dropouts are costing the state. According to the report, students who drop out early are more likely to end up in jail, live in poverty, or end up on public assistance, costing taxpayers over $200,000 over their lifetime. Uh, for Humboldt, as for Rousseau, and before him the Cartesians, man's essential attribute is his freedom. Quote, to inquire and to create, these are the centers around which all human pursuits more or less directly revolve. But, he goes on to say, all moral culture springs solely and immediately from the inner life of the soul and can never be produced by external and artificial contrivances. The cultivation of the understanding, as of any of man's other faculties, is generally achieved by his own activity his own ingenuity, or his own methods of using the discoveries of others. Well, from these assumptions, quite obviously, an educational theory follows, and he develops it, but I won't pursue it, but also far more follows. Uh, Humboldt goes on to develop at least the rudiments of a theory of exploitation and of alienated labor that suggests, in significant ways, I think, the early Marx. So let me, Humboldt, in fact, continues these uh, comments that I made, the, uh, that I quoted about the cultivation of understanding through spontaneous action in the following way. He says, man never regards what he possesses as so much his own as what he does. And the laborer who tends a garden is perhaps in a truer sense its owner than the, than the listless voluptuary who enjoys its fruits. And since truly human action is that which flows from inner impulse, it seems as if all peasants and craftsmen might be elevated into artists. That is men who love their labor for its own sake improve it by their own plastic genius and inventive skill, and thereby cultivate their intellect, ennoble their character, and exalt and refine their pleasures. And so humanity would be ennobled by the very things which now, though beautiful in themselves, so often tend to degrade it. Freedom is undoubtedly the indispensable condition without which even the pursuits most congenial to individual human nature can never succeed in producing such salutary influences. Whatever does not spring from a man's free choice or is only the result of instruction and guidance, does not enter into his very being, but remains alien to his true nature. He does not perform it with truly human energies, but merely with mechanical exactness. 
And if a man acts in a mechanical way, reacting to external demands or instruction rather than in ways determined by his own interests and energies and power, he says we may admire what he does, but we despise what he is. For Humboldt, man is born to inquire and create. And when a man or a child chooses to inquire or create out of his own free choice, then he becomes in his own terms an artist rather than a tool of production or a well-trained parrot. The goal was always to create a comprehensive model. So art and science of teaching represents, at least relative to my work, a comprehensive model that puts all those together and then also fills in things that were not in any of the, uh, the other three. And that's still, that's, for me now, that's not the foundational work and there are other things now that are being developed on top of that, you know, or to use that model as a way of uh, uh, helping teachers become uh, more expert uh, at this well, art and science, that's why it's called art and science, because it's both science and both art. Well, it's a comprehensive framework uh, for teaching, and it involves really three major uh, categories of uh, strategies. Uh, you know, one that deals with uh, instruction, one that deals with management, the other that deals with uh, assessment and grading. Although it's not organized that way, you won't find three categories called instruction management uh, and um, you know, assessment. The actual act of teaching is too dynamic for that. You do a little bit of that, you know, in every lesson.